genetic testing um, in you know this day and age is 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 really empowering to a lot of women. So um, it allows women to take control of their health from the beginning. Uh, so if somebody has a strong family history of breast cancer and that woman doesn't have breast cancer but wants to know if she's at an increased genetic risk for developing breast cancer in her lifetime, knowing that risk um, and if she if a gene is identified. Um, that woman um, could undergo high-risk screening. So saying, you know, if she develops breast cancer, it would be caught early um, and she can go into a high-risk program um, or she can elect to prophylactically, um, meaning before cancer, remove her breast, would be both of the breasts with a mastectomy, um, you know, again, with or without reconstruction. And so that decreases the risk. Nothing in life is 100%, um, but it essentially decreases the risk of getting breast cancer some of the um, genes, like the BRCA gene, that's a very common gene, um, is a 60 to 80 percent lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. And so that would take that lifetime risk down to about 5 percent risk of developing breast cancer. And so that's empowering for a lot of women. Um, and so some women do um, elect to have that procedure. The other thing for genetic testing is that um, for women who are diagnosed with breast cancer, um, sometimes specifically the triple negative breast cancer, um, finding out whether or not they carry a BRCA gene. Um, we know that certain genes in triple negative breast cancer um, allow patients to have better treatment outcomes with certain uh, chemotherapy. So the medical oncologist may opt to um, add a specific chemotherapy based on uh, whether or not that patient actually carries a genetic mutation.